The global energy market, it's the kind of behemoth that makes King Kong look like a particularly ambitious squirrel. Hello, I am Dr. Cool. For over a century, it's been the backbone of some of the world's richest economies. Oil, coal, gas. These aren't just commodities, they're the puppet masters of international politics, the fuel literally for countless conflicts, and the dictators of economic policies worldwide. Nations built empires on these fossil fuels, their wealth and influence tied to an endless cycle of extraction, refinement and global supply. It's a system that's made a lot of people very, very rich while simultaneously driving us closer to the brink of environmental catastrophe. It's complicated, but what if I told you that in 2025, this entire house of cards, this intricately balanced, precariously stacked Jenga tower of an energy market could come crashing down? Because that, my friends, is where Maxwell Chikumbutso enters the chat. A high school dropout from Africa, Chikumbutso emerges with something straight out of a sci-fi fever dream, a self-sustaining energy generator. No fuel, no sun, no wind, no batteries, just pure, unadulterated energy, plucked seemingly from thin air. Overnight, the world's dependency on fossil fuels is shattered. And for countries whose entire economies revolve around oil and gas exports, well, let's just say it makes the 2008 financial crisis look like a minor accounting error. We're talking full-blown economic earthquake, the kind that reshapes continents and redraws the geopolitical map. Buckle up, folks, because things are about to get very, very interesting. Ah, oh, Saudi Arabia, the land of endless deserts, unimaginable wealth, and enough oil reserves to make a Texan oil baron spontaneously combust with envy. For decades, Saudi Arabia has been synonymous with oil. It's the lifeblood of their economy, the foundation of their global influence, the reason they can build entire cities out of gleaming skyscrapers in the middle of a desert. We're talking 90% of their government revenue coming from oil and gas. That's not just putting all your eggs in one basket. That's building the basket out of fossilized dinosaur remains and hoping for the best. But here's the thing about baskets. They're great for carrying things, not so much for breaking your fork. And when Maxwell Chikumbutso's invention hits the market, Saudi Arabia is going to need one hell of a parachute. Because suddenly the world doesn't need their black gold anymore. Those sprawling oil fields, as useful as a chocolate teapot. Those gleaming skyscrapers in Riyadh. More like giant empty monuments to a bygone era. This isn't just a dip in the market, it's a full-blown economic implosion. Remember the fall of the Roman Empire? Yeah, it's got that kind of vibe. But hey, it's not all doom and gloom. Saudi Arabia is sitting on a mountain of cash. They've got options, but they have to act fast and they have to act boldly. Think of it like this. Saudi Arabia needs a complete economic makeover, the kind that would make a Kardashian blush. They need to ditch the oil-soaked tracksuits and invest in some high-tech skinny jeans. We're talking a full-scale shift from oil dependence to a tech-driven economy. Think Silicon Valley, but with more sand and falcons. Imagine Saudi Arabia, the global hub for industrial innovation, artificial intelligence and robotics. They've got the capital, they just need the vision. They could become the world leader in renewable energy, sustainable technologies and advanced manufacturing. They could literally build the future powered by, well, not oil, that's for sure. But here's the catch time is not on their side. Every barrel of oil they pump out of the ground is another nail in their economic coffin. They need to embrace this new energy landscape, not fight it. They need to become the disruptors, not the disrupted. If Saudi Arabia can pull this off, they might just emerge from this crisis stronger than ever. They could become a model for other oil-dependent nations, a shining beacon of economic transformation. Or they could cling to their oil rigs like a security blanket, watching as their economic empire crumbles around them. The choice, as they say, is theirs. Russia, a land of vast forests, frozen tundra, and enough natural gas to heat every sauna in Western Europe for the next millennium. It's also a country whose global power is built on a foundation of oil, gas, and... Well, let's just say a certain fondness for military hardware. For years, Russia has played the energy game like a maestro, wielding its natural resources like a geopolitical weapon. They supply 40% of Europe's natural gas, and their economy is about as intertwined with energy exports as a pretzel. Basically, they've gotten very used to other countries relying on them. But what happens when your biggest customer suddenly finds a cheaper, cleaner alternative? It's like finding out your favorite bakery has been replaced by a vending machine that dispenses perfectly acceptable croissants. You're intrigued, sure, but also a little bit threatened. Because that's essentially what Maxwell Chikumbutso's invention is. A big, shiny, energy-producing middle finger to the traditional energy market. And for Russia, it's not just an economic blow. It's a direct challenge to their status as a global power. Those pipelines they spent billions of dollars building. 
looking a little less impressive now, aren't they? Suddenly, those energy revenues that fund their military, their political influence, their ability to meddle in elections, allegedly. Well, they're drying up faster than a puddle in the Sahara. Now, before you start feeling too sorry for them, remember this is Russia we're talking about. They didn't survive centuries of invasions, revolutions and economic turmoil by being shrinking violets. They're resourceful, they're resilient, and they've got a knack for turning adversity into an opportunity. So, what's a former energy superpower to do when the world goes off-grid? Reinvent themselves, of course. Think of it like this. Russia needs to swap its oil derricks for a particle accelerator. They need to go full-on back to the future on this and become the global leader in nuclear fusion, artificial intelligence and space technology. Imagine. Russia, the birthplace of a new technological revolution. They could pivot from exporting raw materials to exporting high-tech industrial products, cutting-edge weapons systems and enough scientific breakthroughs to make Einstein jealous. They could become the go-to destination for all things futuristic, a technological utopia built on innovation, not oil. But here's the million-ruble question. Are they willing to change? Can they let go of their grip on the old energy order and embrace a future where their dominance isn't guaranteed? Because if they cling too tightly to the past, they risk becoming a relic, a fading superpower lost in a world powered by innovation. And let's be honest, nobody wants to see a bear lose its teeth. Chapter 3. Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation, a land of vibrant cultures, breathtaking landscapes, and a bit of a complicated relationship with oil. See, Nigeria's got this love-hate thing going on with crude oil. On the one hand, it's their meal ticket, accounting for 90% of their export earnings. On the other hand, it's also the source of rampant corruption, environmental degradation, and a whole lot of missed opportunities. It's like winning the lottery and then spending it all on scratch-off tickets. For decades, Nigeria has been content to ride the oil wave, neglecting other sectors like technology, manufacturing, and, well, pretty much anything that doesn't involve extracting black goo from the ground. But here's the thing about waves. They're great for surfing, not so much for building a stable economy on. And when Maxwell Chekumbutso's invention crashes onto the scene, it's going to make the oil crash of the 80s look like a minor dip in the kiddie pool. We're talking oil prices plummeting to near zero. We're talking an economic tsunami hitting Nigeria's shores with the force of a thousand disgruntled hippos. We're talking, well, you get the picture, it's not pretty. But amidst this impending economic apocalypse, a glimmer of hope emerges. Because unlike other oil-dependent nations, Nigeria has something others don't. A chance for a fresh start, a chance to finally break free from the shackles of oil dependence and forge a new path. One paved with innovation, industrial growth and maybe even a few locally manufactured toasters. Think of it as Nigeria 2.0, the Industrial Revolution Edition. Imagine Nigeria, the manufacturing hub of Africa. Instead of exporting crude oil, they're building factories, refineries and advanced manufacturing plants. They're transforming their abundant natural gas into high-value industrial products like chemicals and plastics. They're leveraging their vast mineral resources, lithium, gold, rare earth metals, to power the future of electronics and aerospace. They're investing in education, technology and infrastructure, creating a new generation of skilled workers ready to build a brighter future. They're turning their back on the old, corrupt, oil-dependent system and embracing a new era of sustainable development, economic diversification and, yes, even a thriving tech sector. Imagine Nigerian startups developing cutting-edge AI robotics and engineering solutions, not just for Africa, but for the world. But here's the thing. Getting from oil-dependent disaster zone to tech-savvy utopia isn't going to be easy. It's going to require bold leadership, decisive action and a whole lot of investment. It's going to require tackling corruption head-on, investing in education and infrastructure and fostering an environment where innovation can thrive. It's going to require a fundamental shift in mindset from one of dependence on raw materials to one of self-reliance and industrial growth. The road ahead for Nigeria is fraught with challenges, but the potential rewards are enormous. The choice is clear, cling to the sinking ship of oil dependency or seize this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to build a brighter future. So, there you have it. Maxwell Chikumbutso's invention isn't just a technological leap forward, it's a global economic reset button. The old world order built on the backs of oil-rich nations is crumbling faster than a cookie in a toddler's fist. This isn't just a market correction. It's an economic execution for those who refuse to adapt. The countries that once held the world hostage with their energy reserves are now facing a stark choice, evolve or become extinct. The old rules no longer apply. The future belongs to the nimble, the innovative, the ones who can adapt to a world where energy flows freely and the old power structures have been shattered. 
The question for every oil-rich nation is simple. Will you cling to the past and be swept away by the tide of change? Or will you ride the wave of innovation and emerge stronger on the other side? The choice is brutal, but the stakes have never been higher.